of St. Scholastica. She is famous because she was the brother of St. Benedict, and the two of them had tremendous influence in the church, very holy spiritual people. So as we celebrate the feast day of Scholastica, let us call to mind our saints. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. And what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Mary Kay Harvest. As we celebrate in you the memorial of the Virgin Saint Scholastica, we pray, O oh Lord, that following her example, we may serve you with pure love and happily receive what comes from loving you. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the book of Genesis, the second chapter, the fourth through the ninth verse, the fifteenth through the seventeenth verse. At the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, while as yet there was no field shrub on earth, and no grass of the field had sprouted. For the Lord God had sent no rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the soil. But a stream was welling up out of the earth, and was watering all the surfaces of the ground. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground, and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and he placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God then took the man and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and care for it. The Lord God gave man this order, You are free to eat from any of the trees of the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is number 104. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul, Oh, bless the Lord, my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. All creatures look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather it. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. O oh, bless the Lord, my soul. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. 
But the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home, away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about this parable. He said to them, are, are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach? and passes out into the latrine. Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of the man, that is what defiles him. From within a man, from his heart, comes evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I would say the two most misunderstood and misquoted books in the Bible, the first and the last, Genesis and Revelation. And it's good for us to remember just the background to Genesis, just a couple of, a couple of things. The Bible was oral tradition for a long time before it was ever written down. And in the book, the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, you had four different traditions of stories that were collected and edited and put together as the Pentateuch. You had the Yahwistic tradition, you had the Eloistic tradition, you had the Deuteronomic tradition, and the Priestly tradition. And we need to remember, that Genesis is not a book of science. It doesn't tell us how things came to be. Genesis is not a eyewitness account. Genesis is a story of faith from four different traditions that are compiled together in the Pentateuch. And the purpose of the, uh, the first 11 chapters deals with the origin. And they're showing that God is the creator of all. It's a religious truth they're teaching. That human beings are supreme in creation. Human beings are free. And because they're free, they misuse their freedom given by God and sin. That's what the message of the first 11 chapters is. How evil entered into the world, our misuse of our freedom after God making us good. They're religious truths. Not eyewitnesses or scientific accounts, okay? That's important. If you look at, we say Genesis 1, you have the priestly account of creation. Genesis 2, you have the Yahwistic account of creation. So which, which is right? There, 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 there's no right or wrong. They're religious truths, not eyewitnesses or scientific accounts. So we need to remember those truths when we read the book of Genesis. And uh, the, the first 11 chapters are not the oldest part of Genesis, but they were placed at the beginning of the Pentateuch, at the beginning of Genesis, because they dealt with the origins. It's the work of an editor. That we need to remember that. Many editors. Many editors. Okay, the Gospel today. To appreciate this Gospel, think back to the Maccabees. They gave up their lives rather than eat pork. And here Jesus is saying, everything is edible. What a radical change. Because like in the Old Testament, there were so many things, anything with blood, or anything like catfish or shrimp or pork, 
couldn't eat them. And here Jesus said, everything is edible. And this is a radical, a radical departure from the Old Testament. And uh, Jesus makes it clear, what defiles the person is that which comes from within. Evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, licentiousness, deceit, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. Let us pray. Let us pray for Mary Kay Hargett, for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have so many people close to death, like Eva Gay Quavis and John Leonard. May the Lord be with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for people like Shirley Sewell and other people in the hospital, other people dealing with illnesses. We have a lot dealing with the coronavirus, with cancer, with strokes. We lift them up in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the success of our five processes, and we pray that through it the parish will be renewed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the, all the construction workers. We pray they'll be safe and they'll build a beautiful house of prayer for all of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank God for this day. We ask God to answer all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, of the praise and glory of his name. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Blessed Scholastica, we humbly implore your Majesty that as our merits are pleasing to you, so to our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion to children and for the poor and for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we extol and bless your name, and sing to him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, and of all your glory, Today we will pray the fourth Eucharistic prayer, the special one, and we'll do that just for variety. And we've got a great quote here from St. Ignatius of Loyola on the Holy Eucharist. He said, He is generous even to exhaustion, and what is most wonderful is that he gives himself thus entirely, not once only, but every day, if we wish it. Every fresh communion is a new gift which Jesus makes of himself. You're indeed holy and be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when his once for his disciples are not for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, 
We ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Amen. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. Therefore, Holy Fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of your resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now into the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new home. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the day whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with Saint Scholastica, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Our will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my grave. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of blessed Scholastica, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for prayer. Good morning. Good morning. In my reflection today, I was reviewing the gospel reading where we see Jesus share a very simple and effective message. And what stayed with me was the line, nothing that enters from the outside can defile a person, but the things that come out from within are what defiles a person. External actions do not, external actions do not do any good if the heart remains full of vices. Reflected on that a lot this week, and it goes back to the Pharisees in today's gospel desire to be to me, I thought of squeaky clean, but they were doing it before God, but they were doing it overwhelmingly focused on the outside. What rules are we followed and what are we doing? How do we look? And even more basic, they were using human traditions versus God's commandments to gauge themselves. So to me, Jesus is asking, that we always listen to the will of God and strive to have a squeaky heart. So what images come to your mind when you think of a squeaky clean? To me, I remember the last time I was at my oldest daughter's house with three grandchildren, four granddaughters. And uh, I get up every morning early and Amy would get up with our youngest four, with four month old Ella Kate and give her a bath, get her all freshened up, put her in her clothes, wrap her in one of those thick blankets to keep her warm. And I would be right in the chair because I knew she would come in and say, would you like to hold a papa while I go and take my shower? And when I would hold her and she'd look up at me to me, there's nothing in this world more pure and squeaky clean to me than my four month old Ella Kate. So when I think about that, I think maybe one way we need to do is think about for me is having a mental diet plan. It would be a plan to help build resistance against all the evil forces that come in the way of unclean <clears throat> thoughts, unclean words, and unclean actions. You can watch all over the TV, billboards, radio. There's all kind of diet plans, physical diet plans, for sale, for sharing. I mean, just me, I've lost 70 pounds twice in the last 20 years. <laughs> I'm hoping not to go through that again, but it's a very structured and pure process. So to me, we need to think about a great, I need to think about a great mental diet that'll keep our heart and soul refreshed and help us build our inner strength to combat the source forces like Satan. So I plan to spend more time on my mental diet fitness plan and hope to get a little closer to squeaky clean than I am right now. A couple of things I've thought about is more time, at, more, time more frequent confessions more deliberate praying. R.A. spent some time last week reflecting on when you pray, do you check the box or do you really pray? That's hit me quite a bit and impacted me and fully embraced the quiet process, something I worked hard to avoid 
but now seem to really enjoy and look forward to it. So in closing, I want God to hold me and fill with me the way I feel with Elkay. That's what I strive for. Amen. 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 Very good, Kurt. Appreciate all the reflections. They're all wonderful. Got a cute email here. MacPherson had just attended his son's wedding, and now he took the young bridegroom aside to slip him a rabbit's foot. Always keep this in your pocket, lad, he counseled. What for? asked the son. Because MacPherson said solemnly, every time your wife sticks her hand into your pocket, she'll think it's a mouse. <laughs> That's practical wisdom. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Go in peace and make disciples. Amen. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Sing forth to the Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall be the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, in our heart.